Hello, the camp! Right on in. It's time for the Trail Boss's Journal. Stories and lessons to give you a message of hope and brighten your day. There's coffee on the fire. Pour yourself a cup. I've just finished reading the newest entry in the old Trail Boss's Journal. After years of nursing cows and ramrodding cowboys up the trail, the old Trail Boss, Pastor Jack Blease, began keeping a journal so he would remember the events and the folks who crossed his trail. Now let's join Pastor Jack over at the fire for a story and quiet reflection. Trail Boss's Journal, Trail Date, June 19, 1876. Location, somewhere on the trail. Dear Journal, my post tonight just reads like this. On this date, on this location, on this trail, nothing happened. Oh, obviously there were the normal events of the day, but even they were less than normal. We're about six weeks up the Shawnee and making better progress than we deserve. We got a little bit of a head start on the herds from other ranches, so the grazing has been good. When we reached the river, which is flowing at a gentle pace, we decided to gently hold the herd for a day on the tall grass near the stream. And that's when something usually happens. But Journal, how glad I am I was mistaken today. Let me share a couple events just to show you what I mean. I usually wake up when Cookie's alarm clock goes off. This morning, for some reason, I didn't. I was suddenly awakened when I heard someone call my name. Boss, I heard a voice say. I jumped out of my circuits. What's wrong? I almost shouted. Well, nothing, boss, Cookie replied and smiled. I, I just thought I would bring you your cup of belly wash to you instead of having you come to the wagon. When it came time to saddle up and take my turn riding the circle, I discovered my day horse today was that little bay that most mornings thinks he has to hump his back and give you a try when you first get on. So I was ready. And nothing happened. I almost got off to see if I had saddled the right horse. I'm telling you that's how the whole day went. The cattle mostly lay quiet except to get up and wander a few of the time to the water for a drink. Nothing happened. Listen to this. At lunch, several of the hands even thanked Cookie for their beans and biscuits. Well, I just scratched my head. When it came time for the afternoon circle, Roof Reynolds, a good hand who sometimes can be a complainer, even offered to take Baldy's turn so he could finish darning the socks he was mending. Really? But the topper came at supper. Cookie had come up with a couple of cans of peaches, which he turned into one of his Dutch oven cobblers to surprise the hands. As the bell rang for dinner, Slim raised his hand. Boss, he said, would you please pray over the meal tonight? And everybody's hat was suddenly in their hands. All day I kept thinking I would wake up and something would happen. It didn't. Fire's about out. Stars are shining. Time for my talk with the Lord. I'm worn out. Did you ever have one of those kind of days? No, not that kind. One like in our story today. You know, as the story unfolded, the first thing that came to my mind was, was one of most people's favorite pieces of scripture, and that's the 23rd Psalm. I read kind of an interesting translation of that the other day, a different version. Let me share with you. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I will not be in need. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for the sake of his name. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Certainly goodness and faithfulness will follow me all the days of my life, and my dwelling will be in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> the Lord's my shepherd. Huh. I will not be in need. You know, we've been studying the, the book of Romans in a Bible study we've been working on, and uh, one of the one of the pieces of scripture we just went through was was Romans eight twenty eight again a, a really familiar piece of scripture, and again, one of the mentors that I have used over the years 
indicated there was a, a, a different way of looking at the uh, Romans 8:28, and I love it. The translation says, "And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good." Think about that. For those who love God, all things work together for good, and there's a reason for that. When, when you have a day where you're walking in the Lord, you're living in the Lord, He, you know that He's your shepherd. You know that he meets your needs. What's going to happen to the events of the day? Nothing. You you just almost breeze through the day like like it never happened. There's a lot of comfort, I think, in what Paul wrote over in the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, when he said, "I have learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. And I can do all of this through Him who gives me strength." who meets my needs. You know, we shared the, the other day over in Matthew, the sixth chapter, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be given unto you. Jesus, in the preface to that piece of, of language, says God already knows all your needs before you're ever asking. And he, and he asks the question, do you gain anything by, by worrying or being anxious? You see, when the Lord is in charge of your life, those needs change, those wants change, the, the anxiety goes away, and you truly learn to live content with your situation that you have. It gives you a day when nothing happened. See up the trail. And if you would like to be on the trail of that eternal drive, join us in saying this prayer, Lord Jesus, Reckon I ain't been the best of folk. I know I've wandered off the path more times than I can count. So here I am, with my hat in hand, asking for your forgiveness. I know you died for my sins and rose again. Come on in, Jesus. Take the reins of my life. Much obliged for saving me. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, Welcome to the Roundup. We invite you to be a part of our community of believers each Sunday morning for Cowboy Church Live. We meet up at 9 a.m. on Facebook or YouTube. You can find more information on our website at trailbossministry.com. <laughs>